Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. Live and Baton Rouge proud, you're watching Local 33 News at 5. Good evening, I'm TC Muzinga. Thank you for joining us here on Local 33 News at 5. Each year, Louisiana groups come together in the capital city to celebrate and promote world peace. Students present artwork that describes world peace, and there are performances and presentations done by multiple schools for this special event. It was truly innovative. It was captivating, and I wish I could have bottled it up and just, you know, just sprinkled it, sprinkled it across the entire city and the state and across the country. 1998, our state has recognized October 1st as World Peace Day. This day is meant to eliminate violence and promote peace in individuals, families, countries, and nations. As we've mentioned before, today marks the beginning of October and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Local 33 has partnered up with the American Cancer Society for making strides against breast cancer. Walk in 5K on October 22nd. Our colleague Chag Sabaty is also representing our station for the Real Men Wear Pink campaign, raising awareness and funds for our local ACS chapter, along with likes of State Rep Ted James and T Bob A. Barrett. From family experience, that um, the resources that the American Cancer Society provide are very needed, um, they, and we are hoping to save lives. Yeah, and look, and it, we're, we're going to have some fundraising events. Uh, we'll be on social media throughout the month, pushing different ways that you can get involved, that you can donate. And look, you don't have to have someone who's been personally affected. I myself actually do not, uh, but I'm just glad to be a part of something bigger than myself and to hopefully make a uh, positive impact on the community. So everybody join in mm -hmm. throughout the month of October. It's going to be a ton of fun. You can find more information on the Real Men Wear Pink campaign and the Making Strides Walk on our website at BeOurProud.com. Well, in Puerto Rico, there is a growing frustration and lack of fuel for trucks that is blocking delivery of much needed supplies. Contessa Brewer has more on the story. The people of Puerto Rico are fighting hard, but there's no way we're going to be able to do this by ourselves. We need much more support from the federal agencies right now. The vice president for Crowley, one of the biggest shippers in Puerto Rico, is frustrated. His yard is jammed, way over capacity, with more ships waiting to unload. We also ask the distributors and the, and the trucking company that in a way that it is possible to please come and start moving the cargo here because we need to make room in order to receive the cargo that is on its way. But trucking companies can't contact their drivers because cell service is out to most of the island. Drivers can't get to work because they can't find gas for their cars or roads are blocked by debris. And if they can get to work, they still need diesel to operate the delivery trucks. Down here on the ground, the trucks are moving, but only 4% of the containers are making it off the lot. These are all refrigerated units. They require generators. Every one of these generators requires fuel. Inside is food and medicine crucial for the island, and Crowley is going through 4,000 gallons of fuel every single day for these operations at the terminal. Diesel is the crucial link in the supply chain. The Food and Beverage Association said 266 supermarkets are ready to open, but don't have the diesel to run their generators. Walmart, Supermercado Icano, a huge supermarket chain here, and V. Suarez, a food distributor, are trying to figure out how to get hundreds of containers out of these yards to the stores. FEMA has been making emergency fuel deliveries a priority, but gas stations can only stay open for a few hours because of demand, despite fuel rationing. The airport needs fuel because generators are powering air traffic control, TSA security checkpoints, and computers for the airline agents. For many of those on this island, food is running short. Half the homes on the island don't have running water, much less electricity. And in some cases, lives are on the line. These people are your family. These people are your neighbors. I know that you're so concerned about what's happening in other ports of Puerto Rico. When you look out over this crowded yard, does this make you mad? It makes me sad and frustrated just to see that we have here all these goods 
and that people out there are just begging, anxious, in the need of such important supplies, and they are all sitting here in this yard. FEMA Administrator Brock Long says his agency is working on logistics with the Department of Defense as well as Puerto Rico's governor and mayors other agencies, but for now, the supply chain is broken and is in desperate need of repair. Now, Morgan Beard joins me here with uh, some, some little insight on, on sports. How are we doing for Sunday football? Yeah, we're changing the mood a little bit, talking about some funny games and some sports there. Uh, kind of a tough story to follow there. But yes, uh, Saints in action today, LSU in action last night. Of course, we'll talk about the Tigers and that devastating loss. But hey, London calling today for New Orleans. Uh, good performance highlights and that and much more coming right up in sports later, TCU. And CNBC. A whole lot of beer, but not so many jobs, all in the week ahead. Of business. Mark? Yeah, rainfall is going to become the story as we head into the work week, unfortunately, for your Monday. That's when we have the highest chance of rain over the next week. And those rain chances quickly start to fall as we go into your Tuesday. And then we get some pretty nice weather to move back in. Full details coming up in just a bit. You're watching Local 33 News at 5 with Lauren McCoy, Mark Stitz with your Storm Tracker team forecast, and Morgan Beard with Go Nation. Welcome back. CNBC's Jackie DeAngelis gives us a preview of what's ahead this week in the world of business. A ton of explaining, a whole lot of beer, but not so many jobs, all in the week ahead. Expect some fiery exchanges when the former CEO of Equifax goes to Capitol Hill. Three different committees will be grilling him on why his company couldn't stop the theft of personal information on as many as 143 million Americans from Equifax's computers. A drink and a place to live. This week's earnings include beverage and snack giant Pepsi, beer, wine, and spirit producer Constellation Brands, and home builder Lennar. September auto sales are expected to get a boost from Hurricane Harvey and Irma. Those numbers out on Tuesday. The storms may have taken a big bite out of job growth. Economists expect just 86,000 jobs were created in September, down from 156,000 in August. The employment report will be released on Friday. Finally, beer lovers are heading to Denver for the Great American Beer Festival. The massive convention will host more than 800 breweries, serving over 3,800 beers. Bottoms up. 
I'm Jackie DeAngelis. Get all your business news on CNBC. There's a feature in the latest iPhone update that you just might not know about, and it could help you or your teen at home be a safer driver. Liz McLaughlin explains. We see it all the time. The daily commute with a phone in hand. And the dangerous consequences that can follow. A new iOS 11 feature might make multitasking a little less tempting. It's called Do Not Disturb While Driving and can be installed on iPhone 5 or higher. What it does is silence notifications so that they don't distract you. And in this case, they won't even show up on the screen. So how can your phone tell when you're behind the wheel while well, the feature automatically turns on whenever you connect to your car's Bluetooth system? Say a command. And if you don't have that, your phone's accelerometer, that thing that counts your steps, can also tell when your car's in motion. I know people who have had this triggered when they're on their bikes. Or a train, or just a passenger in a car. But in those cases, you can manually turn off the feature. Parents can actually turn this on for teenage drivers and password protect it so that teenage drivers can't turn it off. You can also enable automatic messages to select contacts while driving. But this new safety feature only eliminates some potential distractions. Ignoring the others is still up to us. At least until self-driving cars take over. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. Do not disturb while driving is not a default setting. You have to turn on the feature on to use it. All right, let's take a look at the weather. Um, what do you got for us? Well, we had to dodge a couple spotty showers today, but as expected, most of that stayed south of Baton Rouge. So here in the capital city, didn't have to worry about that. Tomorrow, it's going to be a little bit different. But thanks to all that cloud cover out there today and the breezy winds, keeping us a little bit cooler. 87 degrees is where we topped out this afternoon. 85 is our average high now. We start things off in the upper 60s. We'll detail out the rain, let you know when it comes to an end this week after the break. And now, your Storm Tracker Team forecast with Mark Stitz. We dodged a few showers out there this afternoon, but as you can see over the last six hours of radar, a lot of those kind of started towards New Orleans. They kind of worked their way around the Highway 90 area, at least south of I-10 this afternoon. We really don't have to worry about those here in Baton Rouge. That's not going to be the case as we go into tomorrow, though. Let's start with our temperatures, though. Right now, we're 81 in the capital city, 80 in New Roads and Gonzales. A couple areas down towards the Gulf Lake Thibodeau running a little bit cooler in those upper 70s, thanks to that rainfall earlier today. Now, the big change we had along with those spotty showers was the muggy meter. It was a lot higher out there today. Maybe 
bit into the low end of the nasty category. And as we go into our Monday and Tuesday, it gets a little bit higher into the nasty category. Good news is that's going to be temporary. As we get through that rainfall the next couple of days, by midweek, the muggy meter is going to start to fall once again, at least down into that humid category, making you feel a little bit more comfortable by the middle of the work week. But with the higher humidity the next couple of days, it's also going to come with a lot of cloud cover and some rainfall. So overall, going to still be fairly comfortable thanks to the cooler weather and those clouds outside. So rainfall likely on Monday and into Tuesday. No big changes there in the forecast. And the good news is tropics, no concerns or any areas of concern at this time. So future cast will take you through it. Overnight tonight, we're staying dry as we go into the Monday morning commute. Maybe a couple spy showers, but most of us have a dry morning commute. As we go into the afternoon, a lot more shower and thunderstorm activity out there. It will be scattered, though, so much of the day is looking dry at this time, but there will also be times of rain for a number of us. By early Monday night, then, we get a break from that rainfall, and as we go into our Tuesday morning, should still keep it dry. But by Tuesday afternoon, we start to see a few more little spy rain showers. Good news is the Tuesday, it looks like, again, most of this will stay south of I-10. So Monday will be our rainy day, and then things start to dry out for our Tuesday. As far as rainfall totals, looking fairly insignificant. No inland flooding expected from this rainfall, though it could be heavy at times. Looking at rainfall totals between now and Tuesday night. For areas south of I-10, maybe upwards of an inch, an inch and a half. A couple thunderstorms roll through, maybe a couple inches in a couple of areas. But for the most part, rainfall totals are getting much lower as you head further north. Our southern Mississippi counties, maybe a couple showers over the next couple of days, but you guys will keep it fairly dry up there. Coastal flooding, that's going to be the concern. All these onshore winds will be kind of piling up the water in the tidal lakes and in portions of the Gulf of Mexico. So that could cause our high tides to be out one to two feet above normal from now until Tuesday afternoon. All right, so tonight we're looking at dry conditions, 71 with mostly cloudy skies, so a little bit warmer, but again, those winds a little bit stronger overnight tonight and tomorrow making you feel a little bit more comfortable. So it'll be breezy, mostly cloudy with some showers at times. Temperatures top out near 84 degrees tomorrow. And then as we go a little bit deeper into your work week, Tuesday, a few spy showers still out there. Most of it, though, staying in the southern half of our area south of I-10. Maybe a little bit of sunshine, temperatures topping out near 86. Then the second half of the work week looking dry, mostly sunny, and much more comfortable lower humidity, but that will allow temperatures to get back into those upper 80s, morning lows in the mid-60s at that point. Maybe a couple spy showers to dodge as we go into our next weekend, but a little bit too early to say for sure. So long story short, some rainfall out there tomorrow, not as much Tuesday. Some rain. I don't know how this guy feels about it. <laughs> I'll take whatever comes my way. It seems maybe. to be whatever Morgan wants. Hey, you got to roll gets. with it. You got to roll with the punches, you know. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. What's going on in the sports world? <laughs> uh, well, LSU, uh, I don't know if we want to talk about that, but we have to because we're here to deliver the news and the right. facts of the day and the night. Um, but the big question here in Baton Rouge, though, where do the Tigers go?